Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 2, this is Elgaze115 speaking. So we're finally here in the level that will conclude our Venice chapter. Ah oh, well, already too sad to leave this city but it has to be done really. Now <laughs> this level is huge and yeah, bigger than Venice and Bartoli's hideout. Actually consider both of those levels combined. It's huge, it's scary, and it can be pretty complicated if you don't know what to do. So I'm going to try and keep things as simple as humanly possible. And I'm going to take the route which I personally consider most effective. But don't worry, I'm not going to omit any pickups or secrets or enemies. You're all going to encounter all of that. Now, you might recognize the music in the background. It was used in the first Tomb Raider as well, but uh, this time around it's even creepier. Now, one interesting feature is the poster over here. Bartoli. This isn't actually the Marco Bartoli we're after, it's Jenny Bartoli, his father. And I heard rumors that apparently he was a magician. He looks like one as well, but it could be an opera singer. I mean, where else would you put the poster on an opera house? Unless he had shows in the actual opera house. That's difficult to say, really. Now, um, considering the game was released in 1997, I think. Yeah, actually it was fall of 1997, so I can imagine plenty of people got this game for their Christmas. Yay! Um, I believe that the inspiration they took for this level was the uh, La Fenice Opera House in Venice. I think it was an opera house that burnt to the ground three times, and each time they reconstructed it. The last time it burnt was in, I believe, 2006. Uh, sorry, uh, 1996, yeah. Um, so I can imagine this is the only opera house uh, building available for a gang or something. I mean, I'm not aware of any other opera houses being in Venice that would um, that would be abandoned like this. And now, because I'm talking too much, I forgot about an important detail. Uh, we forgot a, a switch over here. Yeah. Now, so yeah, I believe this is, uh, the, well, at least the inspiration is drawn from that opera house. And knowing this, I was in Venice in, uh, I think it was September 2013, I think, not not that long ago. Uh, we actually, me and my family, went inside and I was just looking for features that could um, remind me of the opera house level from the Tomb Raider 2 <laughs> that we're playing through now, so it's pretty cool that way. But yeah, so much for trivia. If you want more information about the topic, I think I'm going to include something in the description. Could be worth mentioning uh, in the actual archaeology of Tomb Raider side as well. Although this isn't really an archaeological excavation or anything. But at any rate, um, what we managed to do is uh, open up a trapdoor over there. Now what we're going to do is make a very dangerous jump. Not because of the falling damage, but because of an enemy lurking in the wait. Oh, okay, but we had our shotgun ready, thankfully, so we handled that without any issues. Now I'm hoping Lara will be able, able to identify where this key belongs. An ornate key, well that doesn't help us much. Even I can see that, Lara. You disappoint me. You're getting too old, you know that? With each passing game, you're older. Actually, I'm not sure how old Lara is supposed to be in each and every game. I really don't have a clue to be honest. Maybe I can look up the information in the game manuals or something. Okay. Uh, so yeah, now we're gonna go through a bit of a detail. We have to climb the ladder again, but it's no big deal really. Okay. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning is that we're going to be encountering pretty much the same enemy types as in all the Venice levels. The rats, the dogs, uh, the same thugs and snipers belonging to the cult. However, there's going to be a boss at the end of the level. It's not going to be a huge boss or anything, It's but it's still going to be pretty tough. And I'm thinking of employing the grenade launcher there, but making sure we don't finish the boss off with the actual grenade launcher, because in that case our statistics will get messed up. Ah, we'll see how that will turn out. And also, there are going to be plethora of traps in this level. It's just an abandoned opera house, but this place is seriously more dangerous than a tomb with intricate trap designs. Seriously. 
Okay, I believe this is the first time we have encountered, well, spikes, glass shards in Tomb Raider 2, so yeah, you can just walk through them safely, which is something we employed a lot in the first Tomb Raider when walking through spikes. And I think there's also a difference between spikes and glass shards, and I believe that whilst you can sort of drop into blind spot between spikes, where well, Lara will survive the fall and basically avoid getting impaled, I don't think you can do that with these glass shots. And I believe there's going to be a bare area soon up ahead that where we'll be able to indicate that. Okay, now mind you, just try not to not jump over here, you would just slide down into the glass shots and that'd be very painful. Okay, now what we see here is actually the roof of the opera house we want to get into. The reason we want to actually break into it is because Lara knows somehow, she knows this is the headquarters of the cult, the Black Flame cult, and she's hoping to encounter Marco Bartoli in it. Well, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I just prefer to do running jumps. Doesn't require perfect timing or anything, Lara can just deal with it with no trouble. And yeah, you can see how far those uh, wooden planks fell off. And mind you, we'll actually reach the bottom uh, of the opera house. So theoretically we could go there right now, but we wouldn't survive the impact, so I don't see the point. We want to get Lara inside the opera house alive. Actually, a big, kind of a big part of the level is just about getting her inside. Oh, gunfire! Okay, very nasty. Now, there is a specific matter about this area, except the fact that there are going to be plenty of enemies, and what we just just did is a bait drop, where Lara will just, well, flash her well-made body around, which will uh, trigger the appearance of enemies, because everyone wants to take a peek at Lara, and then you can just climb up and pretend, basically you fool the game into thinking that you are in the tile, but you're actually just hanging up above it. I think it works the same way with music triggers and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, what I want to warn you about is uh, something I mentioned earlier. Um, uh -huh. Try not to kill these enemies on steep ledges like these. If you do, uh, the drops, uh, the items that it will drop will end up on those ledges and then it will become incredibly difficult to pick them up. Not impossible, however. I guess this music was supposed to trigger up when we would fall into an ambush, but I guess we were too smart for that. Or well, someone did their trial run. Oh well. Uh, there we go. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. awesome. I mean, if you compare this to the first Tomb Raider, the, the majority of items you received are basically just drops from your enemies. It's very interesting that way. Now yeah, these this is a pointless pit with glass shards and what I'm gonna show you here is the access into uh, into a secret area. I believe the golden dragon is gonna be the second secret I intend to pick up and um, I know there is a safe way to reach it by jumping in a diagonal manner into a safe spot over there between the two columns. It is possible although it takes several attempts but I don't feel like skipping a large part of the level. And as I said, unlike spikes, these glass shards, they have no safe spot to drop into, so you can't really drop there and pick up your prize. You can just sort of see it, to be aware of its existence, and that's really all there is to it. But don't worry, we'll get there, well, I'd like to say soon enough. No, it's going to take a while, but... Oh well, we have plenty of things to keep ourselves busy. Now let's just try and reach this place without... Lara hitting the crate. Yeah, I think this is the best way to do it. As you can see, the crates, they're not that big. They don't actually take up the entire tile. Just uh, about half of it. And they tend to be in the middle. Okay, let's drop a flare. No danger there. Awesome. So we can just press a button. And we can see a thug going up. Yeah, those sounds they make. So very similar to Winston. But I'm afraid it's not just a thug that's out, it's also a sniper, so let's kill that guy first. 
and just jump backwards. Awesome. Okay. And the sniper, although his corpse disappeared into the roof, we can see the drop which includes a box of flares and two shotgun shells. Yeah. Sometimes drops actually contain several items, which makes it even sweeter. Okay, so we're done with the roof area and we're actually finally entering into the opera house. And make yourself comfortable because we're gonna be here for a while. Now what you see here are two switches. Uh, the one on the right will not work yet, but I think I'm gonna use it just to trigger music. There we go. Uh, it will work as soon as you enter a certain key item into here. It's actually a motherboard and you put, have to put a different circuit board in there to uh, reconnect stuff. Yeah, Lara will be fixing a couple of things in this level as well. Whereas the left one just opens up a path forward. Well, not directly. We want to go there, but it's not possible with this gate in our way. But, don't lose faith. And be very careful. Because this being an old abandoned building, for some reason there are boulders made of bricks falling apart everywhere. And we're going to be seeing these quite often. Okay, so by closing the gate over there, um, we get to actually climb on it. Yeah, they don't tell you this, but it's a climbable gate. So we can use it to use it as a ladder and go all the way left. Now, this opera house is made of several levels. Um, I guess it's like four levels or something, including the ground floor. It might get a bit confusing, but um, I'm going to try and keep things as simple as possible. And watch out, there's going to be a sniper coming out of this spot. And yeah, I'm using automatic pistols quite a while now. And I still don't want to give up on them, because things are going to get really dangerous. Oh, watch out for these weights. Okay, so there's a sniper, which we disposed of first, and then there should be a dog. But the dog was too slow, which suits me just fine. Now, you can use a flan, take a peek around, you're going to be disappointed. Nothing but bricks. I am not sure why these guys were even hanging around in here, but... I guess they have their orders. Now, uh, we could explore this level for a while, but seeing as we lack a certain key item, that'd be completely and utterly pointless. And there are several levels that we can explore. However, I find it it's best to start with the very bottom floor, the stage level, really, where there used to be seatings and a place for orchestra to perform. <clears throat> Not anymore, though. What was that? Hmm. Okay. Mind you, during the entirety of this time, there's going to be a sniper in the black suit over there. Extremely annoying guy. And we could take pot shots at him, although this would take about half an hour for us to kill him. So, we're just going to kill him once we're going to get close enough. That's really all there is to it. Now, let me just demonstrate the bait drop again. Oh, wait, this isn't right. Maybe it has to be the tile. Maybe we have to jump over. Hmm, this is very odd. During my trial run, that door opened. Well, alright then. I guess we're gonna do it more reckless way. And I'm gonna use our shotgun thing as we have 18 shots, and there's more where that came from. So it's a doggy, another doggy, and a thug. And shotgun took care of all of them very nicely. You have to admit that. It was a beautiful shotgun work, Lara. Oh, watch out, there's a brick boulder over here. Not only is this area completely and utterly pointless, but there's also a trap. They could reward us with at least a box of flares or something, but no. Oh, well, I'm not going to complain. There's plenty of goodies to be had here. Okay. Now, you know I like to show off Lara's rolling swan dive, but I didn't do it in this case, because when you get closer, you might notice that the water is in fact shallow. And if we hit any of the shallow parts, yep, Lara would still break her neck, which does make sense, unfortunately. And yeah, someone's firing at us, and it's the sniper up top. I hate that bastard, he's gonna be haunting us for a while. Let's ignore him. Greatest insult an enemy can suffer, right? 
And let's be real careful with this guy. Yeah, Lara's recovery after each jump takes ages in war. And that's a sober reminder for us to be careful. These sacks of weight are everywhere. Okay, so yeah, the stage is going to be the first area we're going to explore. And what this level does great, kind of similar to the Egyptian levels in the first game, is that it constantly teases you with views and vistas on future areas that you will visit. For example, under these chains there's a war and a circuit board that we need to insert all the way up top uh, to make the right l switch work, as I mentioned before. But no, it's just out of reach. Okay, always check your ceiling if there are not more sacks, but... Whoa! I did not see this one. Okay, okay. Guess we're lucky this time. And a sniper appeared all the way over there. You know what? I'm not entirely sure if he does have... If he dropped something or not. Let me check. Nope, it doesn't seem like he did, but... For our curiosity, we were punished with a sniper all the way on the third level. That bastard. He's gonna get his. I, I promise you that. Okay. Now, let's be real careful here. I think thugs are gonna appear. Yeah, I can hear them. Both of these guys. Okay, sweet. And I can still hear some footsteps. This is making me very nervous. Well, especially in a game where every human being looks insanely creepy. I mean, just look at their faces. That's just not right. Wait, can we get a better shot at them? They're wearing caps, but... Oh, look at those eyes. Pure evil. Now, <laughs> once again, before we do anything else, let's check the ceiling. Okay, that should be one. And I believe there's another. Which we should trigger while we're still on the oh my god on the ground okay sweet because we're gonna be jumping on the ledge over there and in that case we'd be unable to avoid it I think yeah okay and yeah just you know a reminder I still haven't saved the game so I'm especially worried which does make the game more thrilling I just hope I will not mess things up oh yeah I wonder how the saving actually works. Will Lara just at some point open up her passport and scribble something down? Did she steal some visa stamps and it, she's just gonna stamp things in there? I have no idea. Yeah, well we can't see what happened. Um, the drawbridge over there basically lowered itself, which is gonna come in handy, trust me. All we're trying to achieve in this area is basically just lowering a drop a door into the bottom of the stage, which has sunken, unfortunately. So Lara has to get ready to get wet. I actually might consider the Venice levels, well, the war, the swimming levels, and um. The next few areas are going to be no exception, there's plenty of swimming to be had in this game. And to be honest, I really don't mind, purely because we can roll around inside the water now and also look around. That makes swimming so much more enjoyable. You don't feel like you're crippled and paralyzed now. Okay, this might be a bit harder, but let's see what we can do. Awesome. If we timed that poorly, we'd have to restart the level. Oh. And yeah, what we did is we dropped a weight onto the trap door over there, which allowed us to... Which basically opened it with brute force. Now, I think I'm going to save at this very spot. And uh, in case I'll time this wrong, but we should be able to make a dynamic entry. Lovely! Okay, so this is the underwater area beneath the stage that I mentioned. And what we're doing here is looking for a particular item. But first, let's go to our left. 
And this dark music that is gonna play quite often during the game, it's actually the one that was playing during the first in-game cutscene where Lara spoke to the uh, Black Flame henchman near the uh, Temple of Jandor. Before you leave, make sure you explore this little tunnel over here because this is where we'll find our first secret, the stone dragon. And yeah, you might be wondering what just happened when we flicked the switch open. We opened up a curtain and it's actually a shortcut back to the third level of the main opera house room, the grand hall. But uh, yeah, we're going to be using that very soon. What we're looking for here beneath the stage is actually a key item to be able to fix an old broken elevator, if that makes sense. What intrigues me is that how the hell does Lara know what she's doing, what she's looking for, and where she's looking for it? I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all if you think about it. And this is it. I sincerely uh -huh. doubt that this is what Lara was explicitly looking for, but there we go. A relay box. Yeah. We're gonna need that to open up a certain elevator. So yeah, there are basically several ways you can do this, but I find this the most reliable one. Okay, and we are on the third level. The sniper in the black suit is still there, the bastard. And by jumping up like this, very simple, we get back onto the top floor. Fortunately, we still can't get back into the circuit board room, but uh, that'd be pointless seeing as we're actually lacking, lacking the circuit board. But, um, yeah, we're approaching the main elevator, the only elevator in the entire opera house that's still working, although saying that there are probably only two, and on our left is the grand hall that we jumped over at the beginning of the level. Okay, so there's just a dark dead end over here with nothing in it. If you see like there's a short passage and don't want to waste an entire flight, just shoot your way through, get that light blinking and you'll see there's nothing there. Or you might be surprised and find something. But yeah, there's a switch once again that doesn't work unless we put a key item in. The same principle as in the room with the circuit board. So let's put the relay box in. And flick the switch open. Now you might be tempted to get into the elevator, but please be patient. Let the elevator go all the way down, and let's just use this ladder. And this is where we are, near the gold dragon statue, which makes the second secret. Well, that depends in what order you find them. It can really vary depending on where you go. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the safe way the reliable way of reaching this particular secret. Okay, I'm not sure if we can go jump back up and actually I'm sure we... Hmm, we just might really, but that would serve no purpose to be honest. And besides, if we wouldn't, Lara would just drop back down onto the glass shot and die. So yeah, make sure you pick up the Uzi clips over here. Uh -huh. And now you can basically return to the top floor, but we were just there. So um, we're going to go back to the elevator shaft and utilize the elevator once again. Let's just go one level lower. Oh, okay, awesome. So yeah, we have to summon it. Which is actually interesting, the switch to operate the elevator is not in the elevator, but outside of elevator. And I think this is the case purely because of... Um, the elevator is a movable object, and I don't think that in this uh, game environment, in this engine, they could fit a switch into a movable object. So yeah, but that's just my theory, really. Besides, they probably needed elevator boys in this opera house. Very annoying. I mean, imagine the discomfort of someone else just pressing those buttons for you. I mean, what the hell? And then imagine them trying to strike up an awkward conversation whilst you're not in the mood. It's horrible. Okay, 
Now, we reached the bottom floor. This is uh, the area that we jumped over in the beginning of the level, but very careful. There are two bloodthirsty snipers. They're completely insane and out of their mind. They just come running and gunning, and there's nothing you can do to avoid damage here. Well, there probably is. I'm just... I don't know. Too... Uh -huh. uh, not very determined to find that way, but... Either way, um... I find this a nice excuse to once again use our automatic pistols and seeing as I'm in love with the sound they make, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, and once again we delve deep into the war. So yeah, Lara handled those shafts without elevated voice because she's so badass. First let's go to the left because, yep, you guessed it, we're gonna get ourselves a key item. And this is where we are. We're actually very close to the stage. Yeah, we were running up there over the uh -huh. metal bars. So yeah, we're all the way down here, which kind of gives us the sense of progression. I mean, makes you think like, oh, remember the times we were up there? Oh my goodness, so much has changed since then. I've grown as a person since then. And what I find fascinating here is that you have these columns with the uh, war symbols on them as if the craftsman who crafted the opera house sort of expected it to be submerged in war one day. Very pessimistic really. Now this is our way back up but don't get confused because we're gonna find ourselves in a different elevator shaft. Nevertheless we're actually um, just where we want to be. But let's use a small health pack because the fighting is very far from over. And yeah, there's a sniper to remind us of that fact. And I think while he's gone, we're gonna climb up and let's switch on to automatics. Not to shoot the rats, Lara. Shoot the sniper! And the dog! I had no idea the dog would appear. I forgot about that. Well, no worries. Automatic pistol saves the day. And if we ever gonna run out of ammo for them, we still have Uzis. That's very convenient. And yet, without spoiling too much, um, let me just warn you that um, this might be the last opportunity for you to fool around with your guns for quite a while, purely because in the next level, um, well, it's gonna be the same deal as in Atlas Mines. We're gonna lose all our weapons. However, we get to keep our ammunition and our flares and our health packs. So once again, the villains will not do a thorough job, so I guess I already told you that something's gonna go horribly wrong. Oh well, sorry if I uh, spoiled the surprise. But yeah, just, I think, warning you that this is uh, the last chance to experiment with your guns for quite a while is kind of more important than, well, giving you some hints of what the story is gonna be like even though you probably already know it. Okay, so I may be wondering why I'm even bothering to move this block and uh, yeah. I'm just preparing it for some fun relaxing tower building. So that I have to do too much of it later on, but okay, that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's jump through them like a badass. Oh wait, no, I messed up again. No, I have to... Uh, I did the same mistake during my trial run. I'm not supposed to move the block there, I'm supposed to move it all the way here. And that's an interesting thing I noted. You can actually move the block through the glass even though it's not broken. Like, Laura just sort of phases in and out of it. And you can even move the block through the glass, even if the glass is still there. And then you can just shoot the block and it will destroy the glass. Just kind of an interesting interaction between two completely different objects. Yeah. Okay, so the last time we saved was when we entered the stage area. So I'm gonna be really careful around here and try not to mess anything up. This is the dressing room where all the sexy starlets were, I don't know, dressing up or something. But it doesn't look very hot now, does it? Uh -huh. It's very decreeped and abandoned. But the, some of the light bulbs are still shining, that's pretty cool. Now, what we entered is a ventilation shaft. Which is pretty huge ventilation shaft. I guess some of the stars were really fat and had to just breathe heavily or something. Okay, that doesn't make much sense, sorry. 
Um, and there's gonna be a lonely rat over here. Wow, it survived the two shots. Impressive. Okay, now this might look like a good opportunity for a running jump, but please don't. Lara will actually jump into the fan, so just do a standing jump. And now many people struggle with this, but what you have to do, what I learned just out of desperation at one point, is you have to do backwards flip, and Lara will end up on the safe ledge. And before we continue, notice the dark room up here. Yay, a jade dragon! Well, no, be really careful here. You might not see it, but there is a fan in front of us that's spinning. And you need to get as close as possible to the dragon without touching the fan. So you don't have to position Lara perfectly, because by pressing the control key she'll auto-adjust herself, and whilst doing that she will be invincible to the fan. So very useful that way. And our reward were four pairs of Rizzy Clips. Oh yeah, we're getting ready for something big. Okay, let's just do backflip again. And I don't think there should be any rats in here. I hope. Nope. And we don't really see any button or switch to activate the door out, so we're gonna have to move this thing around. Because that corner is the last place where a switch can be found. And it indeed is. Now don't leave the crate there, we're still going to need it for the tower building I mentioned earlier. And you might have noticed a few very creepy runs, and that's yeah, that's a thug waiting for us at the top of the floor. But yeah, so while these guys can climb pretty much the, uh, the basic block uh, sizes, they can't really jump as high as Lara can, and they really can't grab things and climb on top of them whilst jumping. So they're not agile, they're just really um really strong and determined, that's the way I put it. Okay, so we're just gonna stack one crate on top of each other like this, and then we should be able to reach the top floor and go back into the elevator shaft again. Okay. I think I'm going to employ our shotgun once again. Let's be careful. Oh! I hope the broken glass shards stuck into your body and really hurt you bastard. These guys, they're so annoying, they, they make everything feel very personal. Okay. And yes, that is exactly who you think that is. That is the sniper in the black suit that's been bugging us throughout the entire level so far. And now he's finally down. Not only that, he dropped two packs of uh, automatic pistol clips. Very handy. Now I can hear a rat somewhere. That's interesting. Oh, there you are. This red wasn't there before, and that's because it only triggers once you reach the top. So let's say you enter this sunken elevator shaft uh, from the top floor. Uh, you'll find the red here. However, if you do it from the other way around, just like I did, going from down and reach the upper level, uh, it will not be here, which I find extremely annoying. And if it wouldn't be for the cute squeaky little noises it makes, I wouldn't even notice. I'd probably miss uh, miss an enemy. That's not acceptable. Okay, now, so here we are on the third level, and you might be wondering why we're bothering with, uh, yes, another ornate key uh, in the ventilation shaft. And that is simply to be able to reach the fourth level with ease. I'm actually not sure if this is entirely necessary, considering secret although it probably is it's not as much about reaching the fourth level as it is about getting into the room with the circuit board so yeah there we have it first I think we need to yeah we need to use this switch to actually open uh, open the way basically deactivate it so that it closes it's really a matter of perspective and yeah similar to the where we climbed the first layer in the Bartoli hideout, we just grab these 
Mel Bars and Lara will do the rest. Now, basically, kind of tells you how the game engine really works. Uh, what happens next is that we have to open the actual stage of the Opera House. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Now, in order to do that, we need to fulfill two conditions. We need to activate that switch and put the circuit board in there. But let's say we first activate the switch and nothing happens, except for the lovely music. One of the conditions is fulfilled. Now, let's put the circuit board there. And there we go, the stage is open and I can see a sniper that appeared over there. So it doesn't matter in which order you do it, but it just kind of tells you, like, look, we have these two variables, they need to be of, let's say, value 1, not value 0, otherwise the stage will not open. It's really simple as that. But okay, um... Now, seeing as the sniper appeared, let's welcome him. Let's put up a show! And I messed up. I was not supposed to jump. Oh well. That's what happens when I'm excited. I make mistakes. I think I mentioned this in the hive level of unfinished business that I should try and record videos whilst being depressed so that I'll make less mistakes, you know. The exact opposite of being excited, it'd be like, oh well. And yeah, I can see a weight up there. But we can't trigger it quite yet, can we? Oh! Well, that's one. I think that should be more. Oh well. Yeah, I can see you all the way over there. Okay, anyway, let's get our shotgun ready. I can hear the steps. Okay. Once again, this is a brilliant use for a shotgun. Do not hesitate to do it, purely because well, two of these guys die in two uh -huh. shots, uh, the cute doggies die in a one shot, so it's a brilliant application. Uh -huh. It's You can't really call that a waste. Okay, now that was a waste of time, but you know. Okay, so plenty of crates here, but you don't have to bother to look for every nook and cranny, uh, unless you absolutely want to. Uh, let's just move this thing out of the way. Yeah, I advise you to move it backwards, not forwards. You'll just find yourself moving backwards again, which is kind of an annoyance. Okay, I think we're doing really well in the Opera House. And this route that I decided to take is actually working out. I mean, during my trial run, I had a different one, and then I got the idea to first get the relay box, then explore the elevator shafts, then put the circuit board in, that sort of thing. And it's working out really well, so I'm happy about that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves yet. The greatest challenge is yet to come, both in terms of traps and enemies. Okay, so you see this weight here? Okay. I think if we would be one step more forward, we'd probably die. And yeah, there's a thug all the way down there. So we can try to snipe him from up here. No, he's almost gone, I think. Oh, there he is. Awesome. And, yeah, I can clearly see he dropped nothing, which I'm very happy about. Because we don't have to take a detour. But in case you feel like returning for whatever reason back there, uh, there's a very convenient switch over here. Which... This is this is kind of an irony. Opens the little wooden gate here, and this bloody door is why we've been doing everything up to this point so far. Basically, just just going through this bloody wooden door. That that's pretty much all that is going on. <laughs> Makes you feel rather horrible. Like, oh my god, it's so ins insignificant. Okay, now at this point, if you'll forgive me, if not then I'm gonna live my entire life in shame. I'm gonna save. Because this, as I said, is gonna be, a, oh wait, a challenge both in terms of traps and enemies. And first, let's use a small health bag. Okay, it wasn't a waste. We have small amount of health missing. Awesome. Well, that didn't work. Okay, well, we have our first death in this level. Awesome. Let me just reload. <laughs> 
Okay, here we are. Let me see. I mean, we could theoretically try and... No, I don't think standing, grabbing jump works, to be honest. Oh, well that worked. Awesome. Uh, I'm really happy about that. Now, once again, we're gonna... You know what? No, no, no. We're not gonna be cowards. We're just gonna drop into the heat of battle. And, to top things off, we're gonna be using Uzis. Oh, yeah. And that's the new enemy I mentioned. Whoa, frame rate dropped as well. Because his guns are that big. No, don't shoot at me. No. Okay. This was intense. This huge cultist, he has two revolvers. And I believe on the internet he's being called C O L T, a cult. Is the weapon he carries weapons he carries. Not entirely sure, he's not really mentioned anywhere in the manual, but why the hell not? I don't mind calling this guy Colt. But mind you, this is not a unique boss. We're gonna see this exact guy, I believe, uh one more time in the game, I think. Unless I'm mistaken, in which case at least I didn't spoil anything. Now, this is a little bit of a maze. But what's scary is that we're not alone here. Oh, damn it. I've got a shotgun ready for you. Okay, sweet. And I don't think this is uh -huh. the last enemy yet. Let me check the kill count. That's 45 enemies down, and there should be 46 according to my notes in this level. Nevertheless, first things first. I think the last one appears only once we'll open up the level exit, I think. Yeah. By the way, if you're wondering where the level exit is, it's behind the double door over there. The metal door. Okay, now, once again, there's a very inconveniently placed switch around, which makes no sense once again. Now, there are several ways you can just, you know, go around these crates. I prefer to just shimmy to the left and climb up. You, well, it looks like kind of, oh, okay, time to time our jumps, right? No, you can just ignore them. It feels great, you know. Okay, and I'm gonna try and refrain from using a health pack from now on. So yeah, well it's a double door on the uh, particular side of the door open, but I can hear footsteps of expensive shoes. Yep, a sniper. And he's down. Oh my goodness, look at all the goodies we have. So much ammunition. This is absolutely amazing. Okay, so Lara found an old plane. Oh. And look at this, you get to see nighttime Venice, which is awesome, but, well, <laughs> if you take a closer look, you can see this all just a room with a star's wallpaper and some city on top of it. But I like to think this is an outside uh, a city, you know, that sort of thing. It's really cool. Although what doesn't make sense is that you get these three groups of islands and while well, yes Venice has several islands even separate cities really and communities and they're not this close to each other oh well so we still haven't found Marco Bartoli maybe we'll have more luck in the actual plane Not quite the same now, is it? Someday you will get a speeding ticket for the tongue, Fabio. Hey, it's just a gut feeling, but um, maybe you are wrong to look there. <laughs> is your belief so fragile? Relax. Breathe deep. The gut, Fabio, has no more direction than a simple through and out. When my father left when I was a boy, he confided to me that he was a knight. Echoed by Sans 
something greater than impulse. He possessed the seraph. But he was just a disciple in this design. His death, plotting a path to be sought by the one, his son. You understand? Have faith, Fabio. Not God, Rod. We are searching the right place. I know it. I believe it, Marco. Good. Heroes, have you fixed that rail yet? So we have 46 kills, we found all the secrets, you know, this was the longest level so far, it took us almost, uh, well, for almost 45 minutes, and according to my notes, we kill, no, we found 36 different items during the entirety of this level. Now mind you, yes, I count the secret dragons and all the key items as items to be picked up. Okay, so, uh... I believe Lara got herself into trouble this time. Apparently, the guy with a Greek name, Eros, or <laughs> repaired the railing and um, knocked Lara out as a little bonus. Well, I hope nothing bad is going to happen to her. Either way, uh, we're going to find out what happens with Lara in the next level, so stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.